Hi. Hi there, YouTubers. My name is Michael Pavlitich, and I want to show you very briefly how to repartition a hard drive using MX Linux. This video is intended for people who have done the default install of MX Linux and they use the entire hard disk drive, and they've decided that later on they want to add a data partition. So I have got here a virtual machine that I'm operating, and uh, I'm running live Linux at the moment. And uh, this is the, the root drive of the virtual machine. So what I want to do is show you very briefly what that looks like first. So I'm going to pop in here and go to gparted. Just type part in there, that's enough. Password in there. And what do you know, I put the wrong password in there. We'll just wait for that to open up. Okay, so here's a partitioning of the MX system underneath all of this. It's a 20 gigabyte drive allocation that I've given it. And this is just the default setup. So what I want to do is I want to squash this down here and make another data partition. Of course, this is only a small drive. I don't recommend doing this on a small drive, but it'll give you all that you need to learn about how to do this process properly. There are a few things you need to do before you get started. And let's just go and have a look at what that is. So when you're running live, what you need to do is mount the partition. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that partition. And here's the, here's the details of the partition. What we want to do is we want to back up the ETCF stab. Now, hopefully before you've done any of this, you'll have backed up your whole hard drive, right? You're not going to do anything silly like repartitioning your root drive or, or adding a home partition before actually backing up your hard drive, are you? If you haven't, go ahead and do a backup. And lucky backup is a good option for you. Right, let's get, let's get started. So Etsy here, and, uh, and then we want to go to the F stab. So with Etsy open, you don't have, to, don't have to try hard, just start typing what you want to find. So FST takes us straight to F stab. So it's highlighted down here. Just take that and drag that across to the desktop. Come on, maybe that didn't work. We'll try that again. There we go. Drag it across to the desktop. And what I want to show you here, I'm going to go ahead and unmount this because I don't want it mounted any further. And close that. We want to have a look at what the FSTAB looks like. Now, FSTAB stands for File System Table. And what we see here is there are, two, there are two allocations in there. There's the root, that's the root partition there, and there's a swap partition. Now, that's exactly what we saw before. And we're going to go ahead and make changes to those. So I'm going to show you now how to do that, and then a little, little key to making things work for you. Okay? We'll close that because we don't need that open anymore. Back to Gparted. And we have our partitions here. So all we're going to do is resize this. And to do that, um, it pays to make sure nothing on the drive is in operation. But because we're running in, in live Linux, it really won't matter if we leave MX swap on. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn swap off. So right click this and click on swap off. Right. Now there's no locked partition anywhere on, on this storage media. I'm going to go ahead and right click this and resize. Now, I'm just going to res uh, resize a little bit. I may end up having to... Um, actually, I'm going to, go, I'm going to take a moment here just to explain how the Linux file system, the ext4 file system works. In the storage partition, we, you and I think in terms of sequential storage, um, but Linux uh, in the ext4 system doesn't think like that. Your first file ever planted on a Linux file system, and, and um, an, ex an exception is the bootloader, would be right here in the middle of the drive. So as you fill your drive, it fills in the middle and starts occupying space all over the place. When you're resizing a drive, it's got to move any files it finds that are in the path. So I'm just going to resize a little bit, okay? Rather than, I mean, it won't let me resize down past that. And as we can see here, we get 4.811 megabytes or 4.8 gigabytes of used space. I'm going to take that up a little bit to about halfway, something like about here. Now, at this point in time, if I wanted to adjust it to, meet, to make an exact size, let's say I want exactly 10 gigabytes here, 110 00, oops, and I press tab, what you see here is it's grown nicely. If I want to make that 8 gigabytes, 8,000, you can adjust it with actual numbers as you go. So we left the 10 400. I'm going to go back to the 10, and we're going to go ahead and resize that. We, that's, that's what the new layout's going to look like. So we go ahead and we hit apply. And apply again. And now it's going to sit there and do that work for us. Now, um, I'm just going to let that go for a short time. If it looks like it's going to take ages, I'm going to pause the recording 
and we'll come back to it later on. And yes, I'll pause it. We'll see you very shortly. And we're back. So we're finished with the repartitioning. It didn't actually take that long because it's only a small drive. But uh, let's say on a drive of 256 megs or 256 gigs, uh, you might expect to wait five minutes or so. Anyway, we're done. If you want to see the details of that, you can open this up and, con and uh, drill down to, to see what happened at every point in the time. But there's no need to. We're happy that it's done OK. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now, what I'd normally do at this point in time is I'd reboot the machine to make sure it's working. But in this case here, because uh, I'm working on a virtual machine and I've, I've taken a snapshot of my virtual machine, I can destroy it and then re restore it to the snapshot. I'm just going to keep moving forward at a blinding rate. Right, so we have now SDA1, which is an XD4 partition, and SDA2, which is a Linux swap partition. The next partition we're going to be putting in is, an, is going to be called SDA3, which is a third partition in sequence. But because this was first, this was second, this one here in the middle is going to be third. So you need to be sure about how that works. And uh, what I want to do is I want to refer, now, refer back to this in a moment, this little file here, the FSTAB. If I right click the SDA1 and I click on information, what we'll see here is it's got a universal ID on there. That's a UUID. And that's what MX Linux, that's what MX Linux uses to reference each partition. Now this one starts A, C, B, D, E, D. We'll close that. We'll look at swap and do the same here, and that's B3838, etc, etc, etc. When we look at this file here, the FSAB file, we see A, B, C, D, E, D, just like before, there's our root partition, as indicated by that, and B3838, there's our swap partition, as indicated by that. And um, what we need to do with this is we need to add another line in here once we get home. So we're just going to leave it open. I'm going to minimize that for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and create a new home partition. So right click there, click on new, and uh, make sure this is there. Give it a label if you want to. Um, data will do just fine. We're going to use all the available space, leave nothing left over, and click add. We'll go ahead and apply that. And that only takes a moment because it's in a virtual machine. It's a very small partition. So now that we've done this, what we need to do is, is identify, here it is, SDA3, the UUID that's going to be used in here. So we pop into here SDA3, right click that, go to information, and we have our UUID. So we take this and we copy that across. We copy, we, we just highlight that and control C on the keyboard to copy it. I mean, you can right click and copy if you're a mousey type person, but uh, I tend to use a combination of mouse and keyboard. And uh, we're now going to go into this file here that we have minimized. And we're going, to pop, we're going to pop that in. But what I like to do is, um, here we go, this is the end of the line here. No, that's the end of the line there. So just stretch it out. Let's hope I can get it all on screen. No, I can't. That won't matter too much. But it, look, let's just go ahead and drop, and take some spaces out of here. And we'll take it back to here, eh? Right, there we go. That shouldn't affect anything because it's just basically a bunch of tabs. Right. Click in here and go UUID equals and paste. That's a control V. And this is the UUID of the new partition that we've got. Now, of course, we need to put that somewhere. So we'll put a few spaces in here and we'll line, we'll line them up sort of round about here. So let's go ahead and line them up all nicely. There's a swap. And this is going to be home, just like that. And then you don't... Um, We'll go uh, a couple of spaces, and uh, ext4 is going to be the partition type. So let's go ahead and ch change this. I'm only doing this for you guys so you can see it in a nice, laid, nicely laid out way, rather than, um, <clears throat> excuse me, rather than uh, say this is what you need to do in every situation. So ext, so it's a home, this is a swap partition, it's formatted as swap, and it's got the defaults of zero zero. This one is now going to be the home partition. It's formatted as ext4, and uh, we've got to tell it to do something with, with how it's mounted. So we're going to go ahead, oops, just line it up again. Defaults will do just fine. And then uh, one, zero. That's just how the drive is treated. But uh, I mean, you can do one, one if you want to. That, that's really up to you. And just make sure there's a blank, there's an empty space at the end of the end of that file. So go ahead and save that. 
So that's either file, sa uh, file, save, or control F. So that's now saved, and we're ready to roll. Well, we think we're ready to roll, but that's not quite true just yet. So let's show you exactly why that is. Having it done all that, we now see the data position here, and we see the root MX16. Before we can do anything, we actually have to mount both partitions. So we'll mount the root, and then we'll mount the data. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up a second instance of this, and uh, we're going to have the data here, and we're going to have the root here. So the data at this point in time is completely empty, but we need to have something from home in that. So let's have a look at what's in home. In home, we've got a folder called owner, but in here, we've got nothing but empty space. And how can we tell? 7.6 gigabytes of available space down here, and on this one, 5.3 gigs available space. So we know we're on two different drives. Now, you can't, you should never just copy from one point to another in a graphical user interface. What you want to be doing is using, um, if, uh, using something like if, uh, like rsync. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So here's a terminal. Actually, no, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to right click here. So I'm going to open a terminal from within this location. Open a terminal here. So you see I'm in media demo root mx16 home. And I'm going to type another command. R S Y N C minus A V S. And then star. So we're going to take everything that's in there. And we're going to drop it into here. Now the easy way to make sure that you don't make any mistakes is to copy that and paste it in here. Now for those that were wondering what I was doing, um, I just I just highlighted with my right mouse button here. Oh, with my with my right uh, let my normal mouse button here, and then I center clicked. Now the mouse button, the, the the middle button is the wheel. So on your wheel, you can just click it in, and that often works very very well. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and I made a mistake. Can anyone tell me what that was? It was that I had no permission to do so. So I press the up key again, uh, press home to get to the front of that, and sudo rsync. Off we go demo password, boom, we now have everything that we needed from here and here. So if I go ahead and delete this, the next time we boot, it's going to fall over miserably if this does not exist. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So I'll show you the quickest way to do that. Open root sooner here. OK, there, and she's gone. Just like that, I just I did shift delete, so there's no recycle bin or anything, um, no trash bin involved with that. There's now just an empty folder. So now this home location here, I'll go back to here. This home is only a placeholder and nothing else. When we revert, it's going to go here. But before we do that, we need to take the fstab file that we created and drop it in where we um, drop it into here. So let's go ahead and pop into here, right click, open root through into here, and root again. And we can disappear this one, we don't need that. And then of course we go to Etsy, and we want to put fstab back in here. So if we go ahead and just highlight something, fst, there's our fstab file down there. Oops, I moved the mouse too quickly. So we'll find it this way. Eh? Here's our fstab here. And uh, I want you to cast your eye down here, 313 kilobytes, 313 bytes. That's the size of the file, right? I'm going to go ahead now. I don't need this open anymore. I'm going to drag this in. So we're replacing the earlier file, which was 313 bytes, with this file, which is 337 bytes. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that. So now when we highlight this file, we now see we've got the new file, 337 bytes. And uh, if we go ahead and open that, there is our new file that we can see with those new defaults built into it. Now, like I said, here's a moment of truth. What I need to do now is I need to reboot. So I'm going to go pop in here and pop in here, and I'm going to restart this, this, this system. Of course, being a live Linux um, a v a virtual machine, it's going to want to eject the CD and then reboot normally. So let's go ahead and watch this happening. Here we go, and here we go. Now I worked on an MX18 system that I did some. Oh gosh, I, I bought this Nagios back in sort of three years ago, maybe. It's 
So it's been hanging around for this long. All right, we're back in. And let's have a look at the password writer because I haven't opened this for years. Oh, I haven't opened it. Okay. I might have to log in as root. Root and... Uh, What do you know? I can't remember the password. Give it a second. Nope. Nope. Oh, I can't remember the password. That's terrible. Okay, well, that's a bit of, that's a, bit of a fail, isn't it? Look, I'll go and uh, sort out my passwords in this, and I'll come back to the recording. Hey, I'm back again. Just thought I'd backtrack a bit on what I just said. And uh, instead of coming back to you with the uh, repaired password, I want to show you how I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to add into this little video um, how to use the chroot rescue in MX Linux. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that. And uh, just to show you exactly where we are again, so we've still got the data and root MX16 that we had before. Okay. So pop into here. This is about the easiest way you can possibly imagine to uh, to get back into a system where you've forgotten the password. And uh, here it is here, chroot rescue scan. We'll go ahead and click on that. Password for demo. And what it shows here is it's got MX16 metamorphosis. Uh, forget the date, um, but it's already selected it. So all you have to do is press enter to select the highlighted entry. So go ahead. Now we're actually in MX16. And I want to show you something very, very briefly here. Um, so, uh, who am I? I am root. Okay, and uh, list. So these are the contents, and um, the contents of the drive that I'm logged into. And here's our home one here. And what I want to do is I want to show um, the contents of home. Theoretically, there should be nothing in there. LS home. List the contents of home. It's empty. How about that? So I know I'm on the right drive. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and reset the root, the root password, which I didn't know. PASSWD. Enter the new Unix password. So I'm just going to go TRR for the sake of something nice and easy to remember. I can go ahead and change it later on. And that's the root password changed. Simple as that. So Control D to exit. And Q to exit again. Done. I have now reset the password on that. OK. Rebooting. And uh, we'll meet you back in just a few seconds. Where is it? Restart. Okay, we're back again. And uh, of course, we're still not going to be able to log in as owner. So I'm going to log in as root as I did before. So root and T L O R. That's better. I'm logging in. Now, of course, you can always log in and uh, you can always use the MX tools to reset passwords. I prefer to do it another way. The MX tools kind of speak for themselves. So like if you pop into here, now this is MX16, so it's going to be a much, much older version of it. And uh, somewhere in here, we'll have user manager. I've probably missed it. There it is right in front of my eyes. So you can go user manager. And then uh, you can choose a user, add change user password. You can pop into here and you can go ahead and change a password, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I prefer to do the command line way. So I'm going to go ahead and do it with the command line. There, access terminal, so sudo password O W N E S sudo password owner and new Unix password R E N O W. This is the mix up of word owner. Renow, renow, done. Control D and log out. And now R E N O W. Now of course if it didn't work, we wouldn't even get here. Oh, this, I remember this annoying screen. Okay, have a look, having a look here, we now have our home folder, where the, the relocated home folder. We have 8.1 gigabytes of free space in there. If I go to the file system, we have 5.7 gigabytes. So we have successfully added a home partition. We'll go back and have another look at that through Gparted. And there we have it successfully moved the petition and rescued a root password while we're at it to gain access to a system we did not have access to before. Perfect. Guys, I hope 
this is going to really help a lot of you guys to overcome a huge fear that people have of repartitioning drives when we're done. You have to be careful. You have to be ultra, ultra careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring forward my VM screen here. And I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to, um, oops, no, not right click, normal. Look at the snapshots. Here's my snapshot that I've been before. Everything I've been doing works here. Um, so I can go ahead and replace the snapshot if I want to. Uh, and it will go back to as it was. Um, or I can just carry on here and move on from there. Okay. I hope this is going to help a hang of a lot. Um, for further help and information, please do visit the MX Linux forums. Um, my username on there is M underscore PAV. Um, there's plenty of people there that can help you. And um, I live in the, uh, the time zone where I'm GMT plus 12, so I'm ahead of most of the world. And um, you might get faster responses from others, but together we can cover every one of your needs. And I hope you enjoy using MX Linux. This is Mike Pav out.